Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to Paracetamore Academy. This is Mabel Lishdan, I'm a fourth year pharmacy student at the Lebanese American University and today we're going to be continuing part two of Adrenergic. I'm going to be talking mainly about the antagonists. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the reversible and irreversible antagonists in addition to the non-receptor antagonists. So now we're going to be talking about the alpha blockers. Uh, they can be non-selective, which means that they can block alpha-1 and 2, and they can be selective, which means that they can block either alpha-1 or alpha-2. So if they block alpha-1, they are alpha-1 blockers or antagonists, and if they block alpha-2, they are alpha-2 blockers or antagonists. And we also have the irreversible, which are non-selective. So for the irreversible alpha blockers non-selective, we have phenoxybenzamine. Its chemical class is beta-haloalkanonine derivative. It has a slow onset of action. It is a pro-drug and needs to be activated in order to be active. And it has a limited use in pheochromocytoma. For the reversible alpha blockers non-selective, we have two drugs which are tolazolene and fentolamine. As we can see in the figure, tolazolene doesn't have a ortho substitution like alpha-1 agonists. Uh, usually for alpha-1 agonists, they have an ortho substitution which can be distinctive from alpha-1 blockers. But here, Talazalian lacks this uh, ortho substitution, so it doesn't have an alpha agonistic effect. In addition, they both have a limited use in treatment of symptoms of pheochromocytoma as of uh, phenoxybenzamine, and the chemical class of Talazalian and fentolamine is imidazole. For the reversible alpha-1 blockers, we have three drugs, prazosine, tyrosine, and doxazosine. Uh, their chemical class is quinazoline derivatives. They all contain 4-amino-6-7-dimethoxyquinazoline ring connected to apiperazine at C2, and they all lower blood pressure. How do they lower blood pressure? Because they are alpha-1 blockers, and usually an alpha-1 agonist causes vasoconstriction. But when we block this receptor, we decrease blood, blood pressure because we are blocking the postsynaptic alpha-1 receptors in the blood vessels. So now, norepinephrine won't be able to bind anymore, which would decrease blood pressure. We also have tonsillocene. It's, it's also a selective alpha-1 blocker, and its chemical class is phenylethylamine or sulfonamide derivative. It has a high affinity to the alpha-1A subtype, which is present in prostate gland and it's indicated to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. In addition, we have endoramine. It's also a reversible selective alpha-1 blocker. As we can see in the red circle, this is the endol moiety, so its chemical class is endol, and it's a selective alpha-1 antagonist and histamine and 5-HG, which means serotonin receptor antagonist. Next, we have the reversible selective alpha-2 blockers. We have yohimbine. Uh, its chemical class is indole derivative or alkaloid. It has an effect on both blood pressure and heart rate, and it, is, uh, it has a very limited use to treat uh, male sexual impotency. So how does, it, uh, uh, how does it have an effect on both blood pressure and heart rate? So Johannine block the negative feedback, which would increase norepinephrine in the synapse and increase blood pressure. And uh, it also blocks alpha-2 on the presynaptic, uh, so blocks the negative feedback. Uh, we have now more norepinephrine radius, more norepinephrine binding on the beta-1 receptor of the heart, so it increases both heart rate and blood pressure. Now we're done with the alpha-1 blockers, alpha-2 blockers, non-selective alpha blocker, and we're left with beta blockers and non-receptor antagonists. For the beta-adrenergic receptor antagonists, we have Plactolol. Its chemical class is aryl oxypropranolamine. It is an isoprotenolol induced tachycardia, minimal effects on isoprotenolol induced hypotension. It is a selective beta-1 antagonist. If we change the acyl amino to ortho or meta position, we, we lose the selectivity. The acyl amino is the group uh, on top of the molecule. 
and uh, however practolol was withdrawn from the market due to visual loss so now we're still trying to find a beta blocker so we replaced the 3,4 dihydroxy by a 3,4 dichloro and we have now dichloroisoproteinolol which, uh, which is a beta blocker but turns out that it has a partial agonistic effect now they replaced the 3,4 dihydroxy of isoproteinolol by a phenyl ring so now we have pronethalol However, pronethalol is a beta antagonist without partial agonistic activity, which is good, but turns out that it has a carcinogenic effect in animals. And finally, they found propranolol, which is a beta blocker, and it is 10 times more potent, not a partial agonist and not carcinogenic, and it is used in hypertension, angina pectoris, and arrhythmias, in addition to migraine. For the non-selective blockers, we have many. We have vinolol, carteriolol, metipranolol, Nadolol, Penbutolol, Pindolol, Sotalol, Propranolol, and Timolol. We also have many selective beta blockers which are cardioselective. Cardioselective means that they are only selective on the beta 1 receptors and they are Acibutolol, Atenolol, Betaxolol, Ismolol, Metoprolol, and Lusoprolol. Now I have a question for you. So, what could be a therapeutic use of selective beta 1 antagonists? They are useful in tachycardia, antihypertensive, and angina because they decrease the auto demand, which would decrease heart rate and heart force. Now let's check the pharmacokinetics of each drug of the beta-1 uh, antagonist. So for uh, atenolol and nadolol, we can see that they have the lowest partition coefficient, which means that they are the most polar, and they are excreted renally. However, Propranolol, metoprolol, and pindolol, they are excreted hepatically, in addition to pindolol, which is also ex excreted renally. So now we're done with the beta-1 antagonist and the non-selective beta blockers, uh, but we also have the mixed alpha-beta adrenergic receptor antagonists, which are labetalol and carvedilol. The chemical class of labetalol is phen phenylethanolamine, and the chemical class of carvedilol is aryl oxypropanolamine. They are both non-selective beta blockers and alpha-1 blockers, so they can be used as uh, antihypertensive agents. Next, for the sympathetics, they are non-receptor antagonists. Uh, they can be norepinephrine synthesis inhibitors, norepinephrine and catecholamine depleting agents, and norepinephrine release inhibitors. For the drugs affecting norepinephrine biosynthesis, we have metairosine and carvidopa. So for metairosine, it is a tyrosine hydroxylase, hydroxylase inhibitor, and we know that tyrosine hydroxylase converts L-tyrosine to L-dopa. And for carbidopa, uh, it is a L-dopa decarbo decarboxylase inhibitor, and we also know that um, L-dopa decarboxylase converts L-dopa to dopamine. For the drugs affecting norepinephrine storage, we have reserpine. Its chemical class is indole alkaloid. It inhibits catecholamine storage in vesicles, which would cause depletion of catecholamines. Next, for the drugs affecting norepinephrine release, we have guanadrel, guanethidine, and bretillium. Uh, so these drugs will inhibit the norepinephrine release, so norepinephrine won't bind on alpha-1 receptors, and this is why they can be used as antihypertensive agents. Finally, we have the argot alkaloids. They are produced by the Claviceps purulia, which is a fungus that infects grains. Ergotamine is a mixed agonist antagonist. It is also a potent uterine smooth muscle contraction and it's also used for migraine treatment. For ergonovian and methyl ergonovian, they are also potent inducers of the uterine contraction. Uh, because of better bioavailability, they replaced ergotamine for this purpose. And finally, methyl surgide is mainly used for migraine treatment. If you guys would like more information, please feel free to check out the reference of this textbook. Thank you everyone for watching, and if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments section.